I'm here to help you know how to use a chord sheet. This is called Anybody Can Chord, and I kind of feel like that's actually true. If you have a knowledge of the piano and kind of where the notes are on the piano, and maybe you've had a little bit of theory and no chord structure, that you probably would be able to do this. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to find a chord sheet, how to actually play them, and how to make them sound good. It's actually pretty fun, and it's um, very practical right now. So what is a chord sheet? Let me just show you really quick. Um, if you look at the screen, here's Amazing Grace that has um, the words, the words are all there, and then it has the chord symbol right above. So G, D7, E minor, C, G. Those are the chords. So actually, what you can actually do is not even play melody at all and just do the chord in the right hand and left hand just an octave. We'll talk a little bit more later about how to actually do this, but that is kind of what a chord sheet is. And then why are they useful? Um, for one thing, if you don't actually read music very easily or it takes you a while to learn music, a chord sheet is a really simple way to play pretty much any song in the whole world. You can find a chord sheet online and it's very easy to play about any song just using a chord sheet. So that's one, one way they're super helpful. Um, also, I wanted to say if you don't actually know the chords yet, if you haven't quite gotten to that in theory, so you don't know what a C major chord is or a E major 7 chord or whatever it is, one thing you can do is talk to your teacher. I'm pretty sure they would be very happy to help you know what different kinds of chords are and you could then do chord sheets or probably even just Google it. There's so much information online about how to do this and what the chords are and you could probably easily find stuff online as well. And then who uses chord sheets? So it's kind of becoming more and more popular to use chord sheets, like worship teams at churches, um, guitars for sure use chord sheets all the time, rhythm instruments. If you're right now currently working maybe with your teacher to play out of the hymn book, I would say keep doing that because that's actually super valuable. But this is just like another skill, like another skill that might be kind of good to, to develop. So really quick, how to find a chord sheet? Um, actually just Google is where I find most stuff. You can actually just Google the title of the song, so if it was maybe Wonderful Merciful Savior Chords, and just type that in, and it'll pop up a bunch of options. And then you can you can find you know whatever key you want. Um, there's also a website called UltimateGuitar.com, and this is not a Christian site, so it um, has music from every kind of music in the world probably is on there. And then one thing you would have to do is just make sure you find the right songs. Sometimes there will be a song listed by a name that's not a Christian song at all, like the title's the same, but it's not the same song. So you just have to make sure you know what you're looking for. One thing nice about the ultimateguitar.com is it will transpose chord sheets for you. So if like a chord sheet is in C major and you really would like it to be in D major, it'll transpose that for you, which is super helpful. And then um, I would say before you use a chord sheet in church or anywhere, make sure you play through it and make sure the chords are right, that you like the chords, and that they're actually over the right words. I've played through chord sheets before where the chord was not lined up with the right word, and it can be very confusing, especially if you don't actually know the song very well, then there's no way to even know where to put the chord. So just make sure that the words and the chords are lined up correctly. And then I wanted, wanted to mention what a lead sheet is. Um, look at your screen, you'll see an option of this. A lead sheet is actually probably my favorite way to, to play um, chords because it has the melody written out as well. Um, although I found out people that don't, don't actually read music at all can find these very confusing. But if you do read music and like to have some music, a lead sheet is very nice. It has the melody written out and then the chord above it as well. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how to play chords, chord sheets. Oh, I would also say most chord sheets that you print off of the computer online aren't gonna actually have the time signature listed. I'm not sure why this is true. I don't know why, but sometimes it's actually very helpful to know what time signature it is so you know how many beats per measure you can do or whatever, but anyway, so I went ahead and listed it for you here. This is today, C major, and um, off to the right, you'll see I actually have the chords written out for you so you don't have to wonder what they are. So C major chord is just C, E, and G. G major, G, B, D. F major, F, A, C. So this first version only has the three chords, which is pretty nice. And actually, a little, little trick, I guess, most hymns actually in the hymn book, most songs in the world probably, 
use about three or four chords for the whole song. Sometimes there will be some interesting chords and I love interesting chords, but sometimes they only use three or four. So if you know your one, your four, and your five in any key, you'll probably be able to play about any chord sheet in the world. So here's This Is The Day. I'm just gonna show you a simple way to play this. The first way, honestly, is just doing a chord in the right hand, the root position chord, and then an octave or one note in the left hand, like this. Okay, and I'm gonna sing along and I'm playing this so you can hear what it sounds like. This is the day, this is the day. just playing the, the most simple way to play a chord sheet. Just a chord in the right hand, and I just usually repeat it like maybe a quarter note pulse, and the left hand just an octave, maybe half note pulse. One, two, three, four, something like that. That's the simplest way to play it. Um, and then version two I wanted to show you is a little more interesting, and I added a few more chords to show you some different ways to play a chord sheet. So this, um, the version two, has a few more chords. A minor, which is A, C, E. D minor, D, F, A, and then C7, C, E, G, B flat, all right? So this is version two, this is the day, and I'm just still gonna do it simple with just a chord in the right hand, an octave in the left hand, and I'll just do a couple lines just so you can hear what it sounds like. This is the day. I wanted to show you a couple couple ideas of how to actually expand from just the just the simple chord and octave, which honestly is a perfect way to get started. But if you want to add a little bit more, here's a few more things you can do. With your right hand, whatever the chord is, you can actually just do maybe the outer voices. That kind of sounds nice. It just would be a fifth. That kind of sounds good. You can do chord inversions if you've studied chord inversions and know what those are. So C major chord, here's all the different inversions. So if you were doing this, you could do this is the day, this is the day. So I used a few different inversions in that and that actually sounds really nice. And then another thing I like to do is just add my own chords that I think sound kind of cool. Um, you might not have the ear to do that, but if you have an ear that kind of like, oh, this might be kind of fun, or just try stuff, then why not? So let me see if I can make this more spicy. Okay, so there's a few more interesting chords. If you can think of them and find them, that would be awesome. And then any combination of the notes in the chord. So if it's a C major chord, you can do anything based on that chord, on those notes, C, E, and G. Anything based on those, on those notes. It's just an arpeggio pattern based on the chord. So many different things you can do. Um, and then maybe even little scale passages can be nice at the ends of phrases, just for something different. Um, if you know your scales, which is very helpful. Let's see if I can figure this out. Something like that. Um, you can add scale passages in. Those are just a few ideas for the right hand. Left hand, um, there are some ideas you can do. We already talked about the single note or the octave. And that's actually fine. That's really fine if that's what you're comfortable with. If you want to add a, f a little bit more with the left hand, you can always do the one, five, one, of whatever the chord is. So C major would be C, G, C, F, C, F, C, F. Okay, that sounds really nice. You can do the one, five, ten. 
So it's actually the one, five, three of the chord, but the three is up an octave. So one, five, three, one, five, three. That'll take a little bit of a wrist rotation to make sure that you keep your wrist nice and loose and flexible, otherwise it might get stiff. So one, five, ten, one, five, ten, one, five, ten. Kind of sounds pretty. This is one I use all the time, one, five, one, two, three of the chord. So again, C major, so one, five, which is G, and then one again, C, D, and E. One, five, one, two, three. One, five, one, two, three. Just kind of fun, it sounds pretty. I think it sounds nice. And then this is a nice kind of hymn style. If you use an octave and chord, a room chord. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of an easy way. So you would do the octave, and then whatever the chord symbol is, you would just do the chord up above an octave. So that's a nice way to use the left hand. All right, so I wanted to show you what it looks like to play a hymn from the hymn book using a chord sheet. So if you look at your screen, here is Amazing Grace with the, um, the chords that, that are in the hymn book just written right above the words. That's exactly the chords from the hymn book. A couple things I wanted to mention. If you see something that looks like G slash B, what that actually means is the right hand does the chord and the left hand would do B in the left hand. So it's like this. Then you have a G slash D. So G over D in the left hand. So I'll play a little bit of this from the hymn book just as the chord sheets that are listed. what you can play like just using the hymn book and the chords written already in the notes above the notes which is actually very helpful. I want to show you one more chord sheet and this one I'm just gonna add a bunch of stuff to it based on the chords alone so you can kind of see how you can actually expand this and add more to it and it sounds actually really cool. This is As the Deer in D major. Um, the chords are listed off to the right. I'm not going to take the time to go through all of them but I'm just gonna try to play this adding some of the, the ideas in the left hand that I talked about and doing a few more things in the right hand just to expand it a little bit and show you what that sounds like as the deer in D major. some ways to add a little bit to it to make it really full and really pretty. And I hope this has been helpful. Um, I would just say, just give it a shot. Print some stuff out from the computer and just give it a shot. And um, it's actually very fun. And I think you'll find once you learn the chords and kind of get used to using your hands together like that. I would say maybe actually practice hands separately before you do too much of this. Just doing the chord changes in the left and the right hand. Get used to that and then maybe do some left hand by itself as well before you put it together. And I think you'll have fun and I think you'll find it super valuable and actually very practical as well. Thank you.